Uh, one of the first homes that I've done was for Edna Buchanan. And you know, Edna said to me, Kobe, I want you to design my house. And then she said to me, and the way the house had to be designed was back then we didn't have hurricane impact windows. So I want shutters. So why do you want shutters on your house, Edna? When a hurricane comes, the government asks you to vacate, to leave, because there's a flood coming, and there's a wave crest, and there's a hurricane. I said, Kobe, I'm not going to leave my house. I'm not going to let the government tell me what to do. <laughs> my office is here on the second floor with my cats, and that's where I shall remain. Do you understand that? And that kind of strength and motivation and individualistic character is what makes a community. And, you know, that's, that's what makes it interesting, you know. It's a, it's, a unique, it's a unique place. I'll tell you another interesting story. In 1994, I told you one first project was Seacoast Towers. So I went to Seacoast Towers because they had Architectonica and Jaime Shapiro and everybody bidding on it. And I was a young kid. I was in my early 30s. So I went to the building and I meet in the engineering office downstairs in the parking lot. I meet the gentleman who's been the engineer of the building since the building was built in 1962. And the gentleman says to me, hi, how are you? And he tells me his name and he happens to be an Austrian guy who grew up in a village near to where I lived in Austria when I lived in Austria outside Vienna in a, in a castle on the Danube River in the late 80s which was still Czechoslovakia was across the Danube and then we had a good time and we talked and he says to me you know they're going to sell the building so my livelihood is over and they're not going to keep me here and I want to retire and I said to him okay and he said to me by the way if you want the plans for the building I have no, nobody to give them to, you can have them, they're right here. Open up the plans, and they're from 1962, the original blueprints. He's had them, he's been working on the building since this is, what, 1994, it's 30 years later, plus. So I take the plans, and then they call me up and they say, Mr. Carp, we gave the job to somebody else. Thank you very much, and that was it. And then I took the plans, and I opened up, and they were my Morris Lapidus. So I looked at the plans and I saw the plans and I saw that there was an opportunity to add square footage to build a building in the back of one of the buildings on the ocean. That is the 51, 51, 5101 on the ocean. So I said, oh, okay, fine. They called me up, said, Mr. Carp, thank you very much. We're going to go. I forgot who they went with on the building on the bay. And about Nine months later, they call me up and they say, Mr. Carp, do you still think you can get that square footage? I said, yes. They said, why? I said, because I have the plans by Mr. Morris Lapidus. And I did the calculation, and I think you can get There's a very Dean Grandin was the head of the building department. And um, planning and zoning. And he reviewed it, and he said, yes, you can do it. So I called Morris Lapidus who's still alive. And I said, Morris, I'm working on your building. I'm making an addition. Would you come and give me your thoughts? I said, with pleasure, if you pick me up. I live on the, so I had my uh, architect pick him up. He was complaining because the guy is uh, Jeff Miller from the Miller family. Came, picked him up, tried to impress him with his Jaguar X9. And, and he is an elderly gentleman. It was hard for him to get in. That's him in the picture right there, when uh, above Bill Clinton, right on the left-hand side. That's Morris. So, you know, he came to the his, he came to the design review board, and he said, "I love what Mr. Carp is doing, and I love the building, and it's a compliment to my original building." Mm -hmm. And he actually put it in the we painted it in the colors that he always wanted to paint it, the blue and the sandy colors of the beach. And we removed all the French Rococo design that was inside, done by a decorator, which he did not appreciate, um, who was, I guess, one of the friends of the original owners. And we made it more contemporary. And he came and he spoke 
positively in front of the design review board for the building, which was one of the reasons we got it approved. So he's an interesting character, and people like that is what makes, I think, Miami unique. And many of these folks were not born here. They just get collected. They, get, they end up here. And they become unique individuals, whether it's Tony Goldman or Morris Lapidus or, you know, Cardenas or, you know, Moss. You know, you have a multi-generational, Tibor Hollow, all of these unique individuals that you work with.